Hello viewers, in this video we are taking a look at the brand new Zip 303 S wheels launched about two weeks ago. Now these came on the lovely Trek Domani SLR which I did a first look on a few days ago, which you might have seen already, but if you missed it, it's linked in the card above, so you can go check that out. So these wheels came with these tyres fitted, but I want to find out what they actually weigh, so I can remove the tyres, the rotors and the cassette and put them on the scales and see what they're coming at. And also I want to see how easy or not fitting tubeless tyres is. And I'm going to try some 28 millimetre tyres. I've got some Schwalbe uh, Pro ones here because according to the US company, these are optimised for a 28 millimetre wide tyre. So I thought I'd try a 28 millimetre wide tyre and see how they are. And also talk about hookless, which these are, there's no hook. So it's something we need to talk about. It's a new trend in the road cycling market, the latest import from mountain biking. So let me remove the tyres and on the other side, we'll put them on scales. Well, there we go. Removing the tyres was a fairly easy job and the same for the rotors and the cassette. Now I've got my scales here. Well, the partner's kitchen scales, hope you don't mind. So these have a claimed weight of 1,540 grams. Um, I've left the tubers valves in. We'll add a few grams, but it's safe me remove them. So here we go. For the front wheel first and hopefully the camera picking this up. So the front wheel weighs 730 grams on my scales. And we do the rear wheel. And the rear wheel weighs 836 grams. So on my scales, they are 1,566 grams, which with the weight of the tubeless valves is probably about bang on actually. So there we go then. I think that's a fairly good weight for the money and for the specification. You know, quite deep section rim, but very wide as well. Um, nice bladed spokes with brass nipples as well. External nipples are nice and easy to maintain. The price point, a thousand pounds, is a really key price point in the carbon wheel market. And we've seen a lot of competition from a lot of brands, both established and new brands come in to the market at that price point. And as I mentioned in my Trek Domani SLR first look with the wheels, to see a company with their history and heritage and experience of producing high-end carbon wheels comes at a price point with a really well spec wheel set is a good thing as well. It's more choice for all of us, which is not a bad thing. So that's the weight on the scales. Um, you can see the rim profile. Now the rim profile is wide, it's 27 millimeters on the outside and 23 on the inside. And a key design feature of these rims is the hookless bead profile. Now for more than 50 years or so, rims with clincher tires have used a small hook on the bead, which is designed to basically act as a safety measure, a precaution to prevent a high pressure clincher tire from blowing off the rim. We've seen cars already move to tubeless hookless rims and mountain bikes have been going down this route for the last few years. And we're seeing it happen in the road market with carbon fiber tubeless wide profile rims. Now, if you want high pressure, narrow clincher tires, then we're better off with a hooked bead. The air retention is much better. But for wide tubeless tires, lower pressures are the order of the day. And many people, myself included, are running much lower pressures than ever before. Now, back in the day, you run a 23 mil tire at 120 PSI, and you didn't think anything of it. But now I'm running 25 mil wide tires at 80 PSI max, and even lower for wider tires. As you go wider, on tire width, you go lower on tire pressure to get the comfort and rolling resistance benefits. So because you're using much lower pressures, you just don't need that hook to act as a safety measure to keep the tire on. And we've seen advances in carbon fiber manufacturing, which make the hook redundant. Now benefits to a hookless rim profile for a carbon fiber rim, and it really applies to carbon, less so for alloy, is that it's cheaper to manufacture because it's less complicated to make a mold without the hook. So making a hook in carbon fiber is quite complicated. You need special molds, you need to machine the inner surface afterwards, but just having a straight uh, one thickness wall is much easier to manufacture. And as well as being easier to manufacture, it makes it easier to ensure the tolerance of that sidewall is spot on. And that is key to getting a really good fit with a tuber tire. And the other thing about tuber tires as well is that the, the beads don't stretch like a lightweight clincher tire. So the beads are made to a much higher standard, uh, don't stretch, and they're designed to really lock into the bead lock in the rim. So that small shelf is where the tire sits. 
So a tubeless tyre needs this small well in the centre of the rim to sit when you install it. Then you have this shelf and you have a small bead lock and you can't really see it, but it's a slightly raised edge. And that raised edge is designed to ensure the tuber tyre can't slip back down into the well when you're cornering, when you're running tyres at high pressures. So that is what retains the tyre. And it really is the pressure of the tyre, the air in the tyre, pushing the bead into the shelf that keeps the tyre on along that bead lock in the centre. So the, the hook doesn't really do much. And that's why I got rid of it um, for no um, disadvantage at all. So easy to manufacture. It's also leading to better impact resistance according to companies that are embracing the hookless. So you can build this uh, rim to be much stronger. And for low pressure tubular tyres where you are running low pressures and you're going off-road and you're more likely to run the rim into the ground, having that extra durability in the rim sidewall is a bonus. And these, as I mentioned before, come with a lifetime warranty which covers any incident you might have when you're out riding as well. So really nice peace of mind. Some more benefits of a hookless rim include better aerodynamics and also a more stable platform for a wide tyre. So because you don't have that hook pushing the sidewall of a tyre in, you have a much smoother transition from the carbon rim to the tyre. So a smoother shape, smoother for airflow over the rim and the tyre. And as tyres get wider, so too do rims. And they're having that nice smooth shape, that nice smooth transition improves aerodynamics. And there's already studies out there that show clincher tyres are faster for that very reason. And this is another kind of boost in terms of aerodynamic performance compared to the old fashioned tubers that pros still prefer. So to recap, you've got lower manufacturing costs and also improved manufacturing tolerance and precision to ensure that you have a better fit with a tuber tyre. You have better aerodynamics, you have a broader base for a wide tyre, and you also have improved durability and strength from a carbon rim. A disadvantage to a hookless design is that you can't expect to use a clincher tyre and an inner tube and go to 120 psi and expect the tyre to stay on. More likely than not, it will blow off because you don't have that hook holding it in place. So a redesign for tubeless and lower pressures, and these have a max rating of 72 psi, and that's similar to the ETRTO's guidelines of max 80 psi for a tubeless tyre. So hopefully that has explained the pros and cons of hookless and why more manufacturers are going to hookless with their wide carbon tubeless only rims. Uh, MV are doing it, uh, Maverick are doing it, DT Swiss as well. So we're seeing a lot of brands now embracing hookless and expect to see a lot more hookless in the future. Um, more pros than there are cons, especially if you like your lower pressures. But let me know what you think of hookless in the comment section below. Now with all that said, hopefully that made some sense. I'm going to fit some tuber tyres. And as I mentioned, I've got a set of Schwalbe uh, Pro 1's 28mm wide tyres, really good tyres. I've used these on other rims. So we're going to fit these and see how they go. Now, hopefully, this should be a breeze. Now, I'm going to do a dry run, no sealant. I'm just going to put the tyres on and see if they inflate. Now, I'll line up the logo with a valve and just put the tire on. Hopefully, this will go on with no tire levers. Okay, so that's one bead on so far. Going on nice with the thumb so far, a bit tight there. So what I'm doing is just try and chase around the slack in the tire, make sure the bead is in the center well. And there we go. Just gonna make sure the tire's on properly before I get the pump on. What you want is both beads to be in that central well I pointed out earlier. That traps the air from the pump, and then as the pressure goes up, the beads get pushed up the sides of that well onto the shelf, and hey presto, you have tubers. So that is the front tire. Let me move that out of the way. Right, that's tire fitted. Now I'm gonna find a pump and I preloaded a tubeless inflator, this one here from Lazain. So basically this massive chamber here is full of air, 120 PSI. Now you don't have to use one of these, but if you've got one, it makes life a lot easier. And when you're changing tires as often as I do, it just makes life a lot easier. So with a tire fitted, 
put the chuck on the valve and no idea if it's going to work or not. Let me just tilt the camera down a bit. That, I would say, is pretty successful. First attempt, the Schwalbe Pro 1. Blimey. That was um, easier than I thought it'd be. So there we go, that was fairly painless. A 28 millimeter wide Schwalbe Pro 1 installed on the Zip 303S. No magic involved, just a tubeless inflator pump. And um, the tire went up first time and it's staying up with no air leaking. So my next job is to do the rear tire and put some sealant in the tires as well, which you don't need to see is a massive job. Put a rotor on, put the cassette back on and fit it back to a Trek Domani SLR. Now, I will let you know how these tires go and I'll do an update on that Trek Domani SLR with a SRAM Force ETAP Axis wide group set and the wheels. I've done about a week's riding so far, but I want to do a bit more riding on these tires and see how they compare to those exposures I was using before that the bike came supplied with and see how they compare. And I'll do an update, first ride impressions in about a week's time as well. And I also need to do an update on the giant TCR I've been testing as well. Lots of questions about the bike and that bike being really well received. I've done nearly 2000 kilometers on it. So I will do an update on that soon. I promise give you some feedback on what a bike has been like to live with for the last month and a half or so. Uh, but that's all for now. Hopefully that was interesting. If you have any questions about these rims, tires, hookless, you want to know more, just get in the comment section below and ask away. I'm more than happy to help. Uh, with all that said, just leave me to say thank you for watching. Keep safe, keep pedaling, and I'll see you all again soon.